السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف Again, I congratulate you for the birth anniversary of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam on the 15th of month of Ramadan. We continue our study of Mafatihul al-Hayat by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli, first section, chapter four. It's about health and safeguarding <coughs> your health. So, among things which he discusses in this uh, rather lengthy chapter are issues related to our diet, to our sleeping patterns, and about uh, prevention from disease. So our health is very much dependent on also on food. It's not the only factor, but what we eat or drink has great impact on our health. And it is interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our body and soul in the way that for looking after your soul and becoming more spiritual, you don't need to harm your body. Because some people think that, you know, you have to harm your body so that your soul can be free. Actually, when your body is healthy and strong, your soul can function better. So we are not against having a strong body sports, you know, training, all these things are very good. Even eating, dr drinking, we are not against eating and drinking, but when you eat too much, you are not strengthening your body. You are damaging your body and your soul together. So what Islam says about body, helps what Islam says about the spirituality. What Islam says about the spirituality also helps you with your body. So a woman is supposed to have healthy, a strong body and soul. So this is very important. Amir al muminin alayhi salam says, few things should be observed if you want to have health. And there are many hadiths, but I mention this one from Amir al Mu'minin for Imam Hassan alayhi salam that today we are also commemorating his birth anniversary. Qala Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam lil Hassan alayhi salam. Allah u'allimuka arba'a khisalin. Tastagni biha an al tib. Shall I teach you four? traits of character, that if you observe them, you don't need medicine, you don't need doctors or hospital. Qala Bala, Imam Hassan said, yes, of course. One, لا تجلس على الطعام إلا وأنت جائع. Don't sit for food unless you are hungry. Sometimes, you know, we say, okay, at 12 o'clock I have to eat, at 1 o'clock I have to eat, whether I'm hungry or not, I eat. Maybe you already had something before, you are not very hungry. So, don't eat just for the sake of eating. You should eat when you are hungry. If you have to eat at a certain time, so make sure that before that you don't eat too much so that you are hungry at that time. وَلَا تَقُمْ 
عن الطعام إلا وأنت تشتهي. Also don't leave the table unless you still have appetite for the food. Because if you want to wait till your appetite is over, it means you have to eat maybe two times more. Because our brain takes time to process. You know, it's very important uh, to prolong eating because it's not that as soon as you have enough, the brain understands. It takes time because the brain is measuring the expansion of the size of a stomach. So if you want to eat and eat till you feel that you have enough, you have to eat too much. But if you can eat slowly or when you are still, you know, having appetite, I stop, this means that you have not eaten, inshallah, too much. So, leave the table while still you have appetite. This is point two. Wajjah with the And you must chew the food very well to help digestion in the stomach. وَإِذَا نِمْتَ فَأْعْرِذْ نَفْسَكَ عَلَى الْخَلَى And before you go to sleep in the night, go to washroom and make yourself comfortable. فَإِذَا اسْتَعْمَلْتَ هَذَا اسْتَغْنَيْتَ عَنِ الطِّبْ If you observe these things, you don't need doctors or medicine regularly yes maybe you know a virus comes a flu comes that's another thing but you would have general health if you observe these things imam raza alayhi salam said law anna nas qassaru fi at-ta'am lastaqamat abdanhum if people were reducing their food their bodies would be all right. So, lots of things here about food, especially about not to eat too much, about looking after your stomach, because many diseases are caused by eating too much and putting pressure on the stomach. To the extent that hadith says, Al Maidatu Baytu Kul Da in Wal Himyatu Rasu Kul Dawa in. A stomach is the house for every illness. Means most of the illnesses are caused because of something related to eating and drinking and digestion. And prevention is the best medicine. Instead of waiting, you become ill and you treat yourself, try to prevent illness. This is also a very important point. Give yourself what you have trained yourself, what you are used to it. Some people all of a sudden change their diet. This is not good. If your body is used to something about sleeping, about eating, you have to little by little train your body to the condition that you want. For example, you know, if someone is sleeping too much, 12 hours, 14 hours, for example, a day, cannot all of a sudden make it six hours. You have to train yourself. Also about eating, you cannot all of a sudden change everything in your diet. You must observe the way your body is used to it and little by little train your body. Traveling is also very good for health, for physical health and for mental health. It's very good to travel. For example, hadith says from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Safiru tasahu." 
You know, like we have sumu tasahu, fast and you will be healthy. Safiru tasahu. If you are always in one place, you get bored, plus you need different air, different foods, different fruits. It's very good for your health and for your spiritual, of course, condition. You don't get, you know, upset, depressed, you know. Also, it's good to go for Hajj, for Umrah. In addition to lots of sawab, it's good for your health. Because you travel, you know, you do some activities. Salatul Layl, Qiyamul Layl, Masahatun Lil Badan. Salatul Layl is also good for your health. The other thing is rest. Your body needs rest. Your body has right to be you know, restful. You cannot put too much pressure on your body. Otherwise, in the long term, you will lose a lot. So, we have lots of things about this. And one of the things that interesting we, we find, in addition, you know, to give your body the food that it needs, you know, the rest that it needs, is sleeping in the night is very important. You should not deprive your body from sleeping in the night. So if someone has choice to work during the day or during the night, should not choose the work during the night so that all the night he is awake. This is not good for your health. Allah has made night for sukun. Some people think, no, it's just a matter of I need few hours of sleep. I can sleep in the night. I can sleep during the day. No, it's totally different. The impact of sleeping in the night and sleeping in the day is not the same. Even if you put curtain, you switch off the light, you make everything dark. It's not night. Night is designed in the way that our body and soul is at rest. You don't need to sleep all the night. No. You, you can work or you can, you know, for example, do ibadah. But at least part of night you should sleep. Then you can catch up during the day if there is shortage. But part of the night you must sleep. This is very important. To the extent that Imam Sadiq salam says, As sunnah, Iza saharur layla kullahu fahuwa suhtun. If these people who have, you know, workshops, you know, to people who work, you know, they have shops or you know, they make handicrafts, if all the night they keep awake, the money that they make is suht. Suht means like haram. Of course, it's not from a fiqh point of view that they are eating haram, but it means this profession, this occupation is very much disliked. That during the night you keep awake and just work. Or in another hadith, we have من بات صاهرا في كسب ولم يعط العين حظها من النوم فكتب ذلك فكسبه ذلك حرام. If someone keeps awake and doesn't give his right its right of sleeping, this occupation is haram. Again, it doesn't mean that the money is haram. It means that this, doing this is not liked and if it's harming your health can become haram. So it's very important to be careful about your rest in addition to eating, drinking, traveling and other things. And you must be also very careful about your illness. Inshallah, we will talk about illness tomorrow. 
But one of the things that you have to observe is that you have to be honest with your doctor about your illness. Sometimes people feel shy or think that if they you know, don't say, they will be all right. Denial is not a solution. So, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Man katama al-atibba'a maradah khana badanah. If you deny, whoever denies doctors his illness or her illness has betrayed his or her body. You have to say to doctor honestly what problems you have. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Innamal israf, what is israf? Innamal israf fi afi ma afsad al mal wa azarra bil badan. Israf is anything that damages your money or corrupts your body. Any action that harms your body is israf. Inshallah, there is a legacy discussion about illness. We will talk about it tomorrow. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to plan our life in such a way that we have the best of dunya and best of akhirah, the health of body and the health of the soul. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all people who are ill. We ask Allah to send his rahmah and maghfirah to all mu'mineen and mu'minat, especially those who have rights upon us. And we ask Allah to make faraj of Imam Zaman as easy as possible and as soon as possible. Bahaq Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.